from them to that. Well, thank you so much, Pauline, and also all speakers. And, and now we are moving to the third session, uh, Reaching Global Like Minds Minded. This session will be moderated by Mr. Bimo Dwi Satrio. He is a senior research officer at C4, and his passion for the environment led him to study environmental management and development at the Crawford School of Public Policy under the Australian National University, where he received a master's degree in 2017. Before joining C4, he was a research assistant at the University of Indonesia's Center for Anthropological Studies. Over to you, um, Pak Bimo, you have 20 minutes for your session. Thank you very much, Mbak Sita, for the comprehensive introduction. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good, ev uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the, the third session of today, Reaching Global Like-Minded Session. Uh, I will be serving as your moderator at this session. So uh, we have seven minutes uh, presentation from each uh, presenter. Uh, you'll be hearing a presentation from uh, Professor Dr. Haruni Krishnawati. Uh, she is a principal researcher in the National Research and Innovation Agency, Republic of Indonesia, or BRIN, and also ITPC lead coordinator. As a researcher, uh, Professor Krishnawati has over 20 years of experience in forest management and climate change issue. She will uh, have a presentation about the effectiveness of knowledge uh, platform in the ITPC related initiative. We will also have uh, Michael Doherty here today joining us. Uh, uh, Michael Doherty is an uh, acting director of communication outreach and engagement of uh, C4 ECRAF. Uh, Michael oversees C4 ECRAF global communication, outreach and engagement, and also lead digital communication for the GLF. Um, Professor uh, Buaruni, uh, the time and the floor is yours, please. Okay, thank you, Mas Bimo. Is uh, anyone can help me to share the presentation, please? Uh, good afternoon, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, good morning or good evening uh, colleagues from other part of the world. Uh, I'm Haruni Krishnawati, uh, principal researcher currently with the National Research and Innovation Agency and previously with the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here with our distinguished speakers and guests of the national workshop on the role of science on the development of forest reference emission levels. Uh, in this session, I've been uh, requested to share the effectiveness of knowledge platform in the ITPC related initiatives. As you may know, I'm also uh, assigning or managing the Secretariat of the International Tropical Finance Center, ITPC. Next slide, please. Uh, for some of you who may not be familiar with the ITPC, uh, ITPC is uh, International Tropical Finance Center where the establishment of ITPC was initiated during the Global Pipeline Initiative Partner Meetings in Brazzaville in March 2018. And as a further step, a high-level such exchange brought the Minister of Indonesia and the Republic of Congo and a representative from the Democratic Republic of Congo or DRC together during a working week in Indonesia in late October 2018 uh, to deepen uh, the sharing of pitlands knowledge, management, and governance. Uh, the ATPC is, uh, is coordinated by the Ministry of Environment of Forestry, and uh, currently we have uh, four member countries, uh, Indonesia, ROC, DRC, and uh, Peru has been joining us uh, since uh, July uh, last year. The working week actually culminated in launching the International Tropical Plan Center, uh, where the three uh, government of Indonesia, uh, ROC and DRC, which support from international organization, including UN Environment Program, FIO, and C4, announced a collaboration to form the ITPC, acknowledging uh, the important role of peatlands at global, regional, and national level in addressing climate change, protecting biodiversity and the environment, and contributing to the social economic welfare of people, also recognizing the need to increase respective capacity through collaboration to promote uh, best practice for conservation and sustainable management of peatland, and also committing to common interests in uh, tropical 
uh, peatlands and ongoing efforts by government and partners to conserve and manage uh, in a sustainable manner. And also uh, committing to strengthening networking and uh, collaboration. Next slide. Recognizing the importance of such such exchange, the role of ITPC is expected to serve as a good space for such sort uh, cooperation, which will support the dissemination of strategy and practice for tropical peatland management through coordinating and supporting collaborative international relationships and uh, connecting different stakeholders, and also conduct and disseminate scientific research on tropical peatland management for sustainable uh, developments. And it is also expected to become a center of action for tropical peatland research to support policy development and uh, provide uh, capacity building and uh, technical services. Next slide. Built on the knowledge and expertise of our diverse partners, we have been uh, developing ITPC knowledge platform, connecting knowledge and research to people. Uh, this platform is actually uh, to be used as a go-to place for information on peatlands and uh, provide space of user to browse, uh, share, search, and contribute to a variety of uh, knowledge products. In addition, uh, the platform uh, is in the form of a website that synthesizes uh, dispersed knowledge on peatland and also can be used as a tool uh, for knowledge exchange and capacity building, including knowledge on uh, forest reference emission level, particularly on peatland ecosystem, and interconnects individuals through the expect uh, directory. And uh, it can be used as one-stop knowledge shop. Next slide. Uh, the objective of knowledge platform uh, includes uh, a tool for uh, knowledge exchange and capacity building, and acts as media for community of practice on sustainable peatlands, and also help disseminate uh, policy and uh, best practice experience on sustainable tropical peatland management, uh, including the one that's been uh, discussing today and the development of uh, forest of imagination, particularly uh, on the context of uh, peatland ecosystem, and to provide a platform on which uh, to list capture and uh, showcase all relevant and uh, publicly available knowledge uh, relating to peatland information and uh, to increase awareness and discoverability of peatland related open data and to enable uh, secondary uh, use by disseminating and communicating available knowledge on uh, tropical peatlands and of course uh, we can promote the birth of new knowledge on peatlands next slide here is the architecture of the knowledge uh, platform, uh, which consists of a knowledge uh, repository, uh, expert directory, and a collaborative platform that it can be used as tool to enable people to reach out to expert and also to communicate uh, uh, with other expert or people in the knowledge producer or knowledge um, and knowledge users. Next slide, please. Uh, through the plus one, uh, as you can see, we have expanded the uh, ITPC network, not just uh, focusing on ITPC uh, pitland countries, but also expanding to, to the global, including uh, the North uh, countries. Next slide. Uh, the current feature of the ITPC knowledge platform is uh, to encourage uh, output discovery, expert finding, and also uh, network analysis. But and the next uh, improvement, uh, there will be additional function and feature that made the from the static directory becoming uh, more attractive. And of course, uh, we would like to invite all data uh, providers uh, who has knowledge on uh, peatland to submit their work and make it available to the publics under, of course, under agreed data sharing protocol. And uh, we like to develop of collaborative platform, including yeah, between knowledge uh, providers, knowledge producer, and knowledge user on peatlands. Uh, next, I think uh, before finishing my presentation, I would like to uh, say that ITPC uh, could offer the valuable uh, opportunities for collaboration 
and sharing of lesson learned in peatlands policy and uh, decision making process. And through this platform uh, and collaborative approach, uh, it will enable ITPC to enlarge the networks and also to enhance uh, intervention to facilitate uh, the unique peer-to-peer -peer, uh, exchange of best practice uh, in order to scale up and improve uh, management action for healthy peatlands. Uh, by working this way, uh, we expect that we can help countries, uh, especially uh, at current with the ITPC, other ITPC peatland countries, uh, to make this uh, well-informed decision and to develop uh, the management and policy option, including the development of uh, rest reference emission level, particularly in the land ecosystem. I think that's all that I can share in this session uh, within the limited time provided, uh, seven minutes. And thank you. Uh, over to you back to Mr. Moderator Maskimo. Thank you very much, Ibu Harudi. Very comprehensive uh, presentation and also very timely. Uh, we, we now uh, know from Ibu Harun the presentation that there's a knowledge platform that to showcase our re relevant information from the richness uh, information from the pitland. So now we are uh, continuing uh, for the second presentation uh, from Michael. Michael will present about the global knowledge platform embedding FRL in networks for innovation, co-creation and action. Uh, Michael, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Pimo. And can I have my presentation, please? Great. Okay, so this is actually going to be a, a, a bit of a, um, uh, oh, there's some overlap here with what, um, what Haruni just presented. I'll take a, a little bit of a step back um, and talk a little bit more about uh, uh, knowledge platforms in general, why do we why do we have them and you know what's the benefit of them? So if we can have the next uh, slide please. So yeah if we really step back and say well why why do people collect and share knowledge? So here's three examples. Um, this you know the first one is the the uh, library at Alexandria from the second century BC. So those were uh, something like forty to four hundred thousand, uh, you know, uh, papyrus scrolls that were stored in that uh, library. Um, that's kind of the oldest and largest, most famous library. Um, and then another one is the uh, Yongle uh, Dadian. Uh, it's an encyclopedia from the Ming Dynasty. It was also something like uh, twenty-two thousand scrolls, I believe. Um, that was also an encyclopedia. Uh, so again, an effort to kind of gather uh, knowledge. And then another example is uh, uh, Diderot's uh, encyclopedia. Uh, this was from uh, France um, in the, in, during the Enlightenment. And there was sort of this effort to, you know, collect all the knowledge of the world into one kind of compendium. So I guess, you know, looking at um, these knowledge platforms, it, it's not really something that, that, that is that new, um, even though we may be using new technologies um, to do it. So my first question was, well, why, why do we even do that? So if we look at the next slide. Thank you. So what are the benefits of this? And, you know, there's all, we always hear things, you know, knowledge is power and things like that, but what is that, how does that really work? And um, I think what we're looking at is a, a kind of a recipe between, um, you know, explicit knowledge. So that's knowledge that exists in, in books and documents and papers, presentations and so forth. Um, taxic knowledge, which is the knowledge that, you know, we carry in our bodies. Um, and then kind of the result of, of that. So, you know, the benefits of these knowledge platforms is um, they aggregate relevant content. So. You know, you can have content around frail, around um, greenhouse gas emissions, um, you know, uh, peatland, peatland management, so forth. Um, it improves access, so it makes a place where everyone can go to get knowledge. Um, it ensures consistency of terms and concepts. So you can hear that even in the conversation today. You know, there's a lot about, okay, well, how are we defining that? How are we using those terms? What do they mean? 
uh, a knowledge platform can be a place that that helps to um, define those terms and, and help them be used consistently. And it reduces uh, contact volume. So contact volume is the number of times someone has to ask for something. Uh, you know, oh, I have to ask Michael for that document, and then someone else has to ask me for that document. Someone else. Now, if there's a um, you know, if there's a platform, a website where all that's available, that contact volume goes down. It makes it more accessible to people. Um, and then there's the taxit side, and this is kind of where creativity happens. So um, this is where we interact with people the way we're doing today. Um, so taxit knowledge um, increases active learning and engagement. It creates opportunities for innovation and co-creation and it builds networks, right? So I think all of those things are happening today. Um, and that's um, another huge benefit of the, the knowledge sharing platforms. When we put all of that together, um, what we're getting is a kind of um, improved performance of, of you know, an organization or an effort or an activity. Um, so we have, you know, from all of that, we can enhance our decision-making we improve our problem solving and we strengthen our leadership in a given area. So there's a lot of, you know, really, um, you know, real efficiencies and, and growth um, possible through these kind of knowledge sharing platforms. Okay, next slide. So I've used the ITPC. So and Haruni just presented this, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how it works. But just for example, so you take the knowledge um, hub, which um, which Haruni just described, and it has you know something of almost 800 publications and like data sets and so forth. But within that, just for an example, there's the like the global wetlands map, which is a massive resource unto itself, and a whole little you know a whole kind of world of valuable information around global wetlands distribution worldwide um, that is then just one piece of this much larger data set so the um, ability to share that kind of information is a, a great example of the kind of richness of um, these kinds of uh, platforms next slide And the second one is this expert uh, directory. So this is also was just presented, but um, you know what I what I quite like about this is the way we have these. Um, you know, we're we're taking people and we're looking at kind of okay, what is their profile? What skills do they have? What kind of um, works have they completed? What kind of network do they involve involved in? And then creating a, a kind of global network. I mean, I think this is actually a really brilliant um, um, a kind of a service or product or whatever you want to call it, but the ability to connect people on this level is really, really great. Um, so, but if we go to the next slide, so this is where I think we really, you know, take people and, and create networks and create code Kind of co-learning. So these are just some few examples of um, some ITPC events, but you know you can see you, have, you know looking at the South-South uh, cooperation, uh, managing carbon rich peatlands, um, the knowledge platform event, um, this uh, high-level ministerial dialogue, peatlands is a super nature-based solution. I like that one. Um, GLF, um, why peatlands matter. Um, and there's a, the uh, capacity building on the um, on trail diagnostic and uncertainty analysis, which of course we heard about today. Um, so, I mean, these are just examples of a few of the um, events that have been led. But, you know, if we look at kind of the, um, you know, an event like a GLF, a GLF, I've been, you know, very involved in that, but that's a, that is, another network right and that network is um is is quite large so GLF has reached one and a half billion people it's engaged 60,000 youth and 8,000 organizations it's you know so by by uh you know the ITBC engaging in that platform then it's extending its reach and amplifying its reach 
Um, so, and I think that's a really important aspect of uh, how these kind of global um, um, knowledge networks work. And the next slide. So if we look at uh, look at this, we say, okay, so here's ITPC and the Global uh, Peatlands Initiative. Um, so these are members um, within just two of these um, kind of network platforms, right? So suddenly we're connecting all of these networks and we're connecting them to other networks. So, um, you know, all of the, the information that is being shared here today um, is also being can be shared through these networks and through these platforms. And this is how, um, you know, there's a kind of multiplier effect. And this is really, a, you know, a mechanism for, um, to achieve change at a global level. And, you know, if we look at, um, you know, think what we're talking about today, these are global issues and we need global solutions. So engaging and supporting these kinds of networks is absolutely critical to, to realizing, uh, you know, true global change. So, and I left an and uh, dot, dot, dot there because of course there's many, many more um, organizations and people that we do need to engage. Um, but I, I think that the, these, uh, these networks and knowledge platforms are extremely valuable and we should continue to support them. Um, and I think that's it. Next slide. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh for the comprehensive presentation and also timely. Um, I think what I uh, have uh, as a key message is that we are getting connected and connected. Um, uh, there's one question uh, for uh, Ibu Haruni from Mas Imam. Hello, Mas Imam. Um, one question is how and will ITPC play role in providing science to improve FREL, for example, to add avoiding pit fires and rewetting drain pit into IPCC standard method in calculating emission reduction from peatlands or wetlands. Please, do I read? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Masimam, for your question. I think that's a, a good question. Uh, it's uh, we uh, share uh, with, with you. Uh, from our side and also has been also uh, supported by Michael uh, from uh, from Seaport that actually the, the purpose of the IPPC is actually uh, also to uh, facilitate or disseminate the scientific research uh, related on, on science in tropical peatlands, which has been produced by our experts, our authors, and through this uh, knowledge platform, uh, we can share and uh, we can disseminate uh, the research finding from from the authors, from the expert through other uh, user, through other uh, like to other uh, tropical blood dances, and also including Indonesia. And uh, we also provide uh, like uh, support through the capacity buildings and some technical uh, services uh, based on the science that has been produced uh, by all peatlands experts or peatland authors. So this is, I think, uh, some things that uh, we can uh, be part of the communities. Uh, IPPC has been, uh, so far, we has been like hosting several uh, sessions, scientific sessions, as Michael Duherty has been shared to you. Uh, uh, some of part is also sharing the knowledge on tropical pigments, especially how to improve uh, like emission factors uh, and contributing to, to the science on uh, tropical uh, peatlands, especially how also for uh, reference developing and improving the uh, forest reference emission level. Of course, because IPPC is established for peatlands, so uh, we uh, work particularly on tropical peatland ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Buharuni. I observe uh... No question from Michael, but I think we can still ask questions uh, from for um, the next session to wrap up session. So thank you very much, Bu Haruni, for your uh, very uh, rich presentation, and also Michael uh, for.
for your presentation as well. I think we can continue to the next session. So uh, thank you very much. I will return uh, the session to uh, Sita. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pak, Bo, uh, Pak Bimo, for your uh, assistance in to be a moderator in session three, also our research persons. And now we will move to the last session. The last session is the wrap-up session. This session will be moderated by Dr. Rupes Bumia. Dr. Rupes Bumia is a trained wetland biogeochemist and his research has focused on studying tropical freshwater swamps to coastal systems across broad environmental and latitudinal gradients. As a climate change and blue carbon expert, he has contributed to other regional activities pertaining to national reporting of nationally determined contributions or NDCs. Please welcome Dr. Rokhes Kumia. Thank you, Sita. A very good afternoon to everyone, all colleagues joining from Indonesia and a good morning and good evening to others who are joining globally. It is a distinct pleasure to participate in this session and to hear all the technical and very informative sessions so far. And I'm pretty impressed by the level of participation we have seen. This program has been going on for more than two hours and we have more than 120 participants still. So this is very good. In this last wrap up session, I will try to be brief and uh, honoring your time and commitment, try to keep uh, the presentation short and, and meaningful in terms of uh, sort of a wrap up and take home message. So without further ado today, in this uh, last session, our first speaker is going to be John Charles Rouge. Um, uh, we call him JC for easy pronunciation. And uh, he is team leader for our research to impact team. At C4 ICRA, um, it is tremendously important for our organization to ensure that all our work, including these new research results, are conspicuous and perceptible, and they show the impact. And for that, colleagues from uh, JC's team are, are very good in assessing that. Uh, JC is team leader for this team, and he is here to share some insights on steps for monitoring impacts of this FREL project, which was undertaken by C4ECRAF in the last two years. JC is an economist by training and brings almost two decades of experience in monitoring and evaluation across various countries in several continents. Over the years, he has specialized in the design and implementation of monitoring, evaluation, and learning systems of impact-oriented quantitative and qualitative research. He, his main focus at C4 is on sustainability of research effectiveness. And today uh, he's going to share how that is to be done and planned for this particular project. So JC, I welcome you to this session and uh, the floor is yours to share your insights with us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much Rupesh uh, for the very kind in introduction. Uh, I have some slide to share, let me, let me do that now, if I can. Um, yeah. Slide, slide show. Okay. Uh, but maybe first of all, I mean, uh, for me, uh, this is a wrap up uh, session. And, and I, I, to be honest, for me, it, it has been uh, fascinating uh, to, to hear and listen to all the presentations. Uh, I learned a lot, actually. Because definitely, I'm not uh, I'm not an expert in in FREL, uh, and uh, it's it's uh, it's very interesting to see so much uh, has been done uh, to to improve the FREL, and so much also in, is in the making to to further improve the FREL uh, uh, for the next uh, calculation of the of the forest reference uh, emission levels. So um, uh, all these quantitative all these quantitative and scientific outputs uh, actually is very much impressive and you will see actually that uh, on the on the other hand the, the the monitoring and evaluation modalities that we have been thinking of for this particular project is predominantly qualitative and uh, because actually our, our main focus uh, for this uh, for this project is to also assess the level of change in in policy and in practice uh, so most uh, most of our money, uh, monitoring and evaluation uh, effort has been focusing on this hard come level, and so I, I will uh, try to explain a little bit more 
why we are focusing uh, on this and uh, how we are going to do this uh, across across C4 aircraft portfolio in general for for similar projects. Um, so th there is definitely a, a growing demand for for research impact. C4 uh, uh, aircraft research approach has evolved uh, to to be more trans transdisciplinary, more engaged. Uh, and therefore, therefore the, the research really very much contributes to systems transformations through multiple impact pathways. And the, it really much requires new ways uh, of measuring research impact. And here you have a, a description of the type of services that uh, the, the quality for impact unit at c 4 craft provides to, to design impactful research and, and engagement interventions and assess research impact. So Q4I has, has a wide range of m &E and impact assessment tools and services at both institutional and project level. And here you have uh, uh, some examples ranging from, from designing impactful research and engagement interventions using uh, theory of change, for instance, to also conducting impact and outcome evaluations uh, across C4 aircraft portfolio. Uh, and for, so for this particular project and, and similar project looking at uh, policy and practice change, uh, the project, so the project m &E modalities depend very much on the project design, the objectives, uh, as well as, the, as uh, the, the key evaluation questions that need to be addressed. Yeah. So for a project such as the FREL project uh, that has a, a strong science to policy outcome component and for which we, we aim to track research findings uptake, uh, and query processes, as I mentioned earlier, are, are very much predominantly of a qualitative nature. So hence, uh, the, the idea is to be able to, to generate qualitative insight from the project by establishing standardized protocols and tools at the beginning of the project. And doing so, it's much easier for us to, to process and collect results. So some tools we, we've used over the years for, for this project and for other similar projects are listed here. So of course, uh, the theory of change for the project, obviously, uh, it's not, uh, it's not uh, a suggestion, it's, it's very much a necessity. Uh, it's a participatory process that can help bring together relevant actors and create a shared vision and understanding of the project objectives. Um, we also use uh, a lot the outcome influence log, which is an internal tool recording observations and evidence that indicate who, who is influenced by the project and how. Uh, it can also capture and document knowledge products uptakes uh, over time, and, and it feeds very much into regular project reporting and end of project evaluation. We have also the, the story of change, and, and this particular um, product uses a, a theory-based approach, and it's designed to, to identify you know, as precisely as possible how an outcome came about as a result of uh, stakeholder actions, and also identify enabling all the enabling uh, environment factors. Uh, I will come back to that in the next slide with a concrete example. And, and finally, um, something that we have been using more and more as well to, to, to capture knowledge gains, to capture uh, awareness raising is the, um, the science to policy event evaluations. Uh, it could be also uh, evaluations of trainings to really uh, yeah, capture knowledge uptakes and, and knowledge gains on, on specific topics. So I, I mentioned the story of change. So actually, uh, back in, in 2021, uh, C4Aircraft published a, a story of change uh, on FREL using a theory-based approach. So we, we have uh, here a screenshot of the theory, the theory of change that was developed at the time um, to, to assess the achievement of, of high-level outcomes for, from C4 research, uh, also on capacity building and various other engagement activities that support government of Indonesia in estimating and managing carbon stocks of tropical forest and wetland landscapes. So I will not go into the details here. Uh, it's published and available uh, on the website, but just some key findings were that, uh, in particular, the, the co-production of robust, credible data and knowledge products 
um, in turn building the capacity of key personnel and stakeholders, and the creation of, of the platform for communication, engagement, and, and outreach uh, at multiple levels, uh, not, not, not only national, but international levels, effectively contributed to, to achieving uh, the desired change uh, that we had for the project. Um, so, Rupesh, you, you mentioned the, the, the next steps in, in the monitoring and evaluation of this particular project. So, the last milestone uh, uh, in our ME strategy for the FREL project is the design and execution of uh, independent final project evaluation to, to assess how much the project uh, has achieved in, uh, in terms of outcomes, desired outcomes, and its contribution to, to impact. So this will be, again, a participatory and, and learning-oriented exercise. Uh, uh, all the data and, and information generated by the project will be uh, the main evaluation base uh, that will be used for this evaluation. And uh, actually, we are still refining the, the list of key evaluation questions that will guide this, this evaluation. And, and actually, all the inputs uh, you shared during this workshop will help us uh, refine the, this list of evaluation questions. So that, that it was very important for us to, to be here. Um, and before we, we commission this, this final evaluation, actually, we would like to, uh, to hear from you. Uh, and we can come back uh, to that later before the closing of this event. But uh, as we do regularly, we, we would very much uh, like to, to hear from you and invite all of you uh, who participate in this event to share your, your opinion and feedback on, on, on the different sessions that you have been listening to. And um, if you don't mind, I will, uh, I will later on copy paste this, um, this uh, link to the Kobo questionnaire that we have prepared for you so that you can voice your opinion. And, uh, and um, I'm uh, available if you have any, any other question on this uh, later on. Thank you very much. Over to you, Rupesh. Thank you, JC. That was a very brief and succinct and very good uh, overview. Um, I welcome you to, uh, to um, share the link via chat with all our participants. I'd like to also mention that this uh, feedback or evaluation form can be filled in both English and Basha. So you yeah. will have an option to choose whichever language you prefer yeah. and, and complete it. Um, what is interesting is uh, what JC explained about the monitoring Marco, evaluation evaluation of the project and in some ways frel is part of the monitoring mrv tool for the unfcc so this is an interesting thing i thought we are all talking about monitoring and evaluation all day long so uh, without further ado uh, to we are a little bit over the time as uh, scheduled um, for this event but i would like to invite pa daniel to share some of the reflections of the event and maybe perhaps invite some of the distinguished guests and invited uh, speakers or presenters or scientists from brain and agencies who are with us in this room and maybe briefly want to share their reflections uh, and their thoughts about this whole process about FREL and Indonesia's efforts towards reporting emissions reductions and so on and so forth. So I do not need to introduce Pa Daniel. Everyone in this room know him. So without uh, wasting further time, Pa Daniel, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Rupesh. <clears throat> um, well, my intention really is to involve colleagues from Brin in this very session where JC is expecting feedback, uh, especially on how FREL that's been exercised in the past two years, the assessment, the calculation, um, the uh, keywords from him is from policy to practice. So we have been producing science, we have been producing knowledge that can be uh, carried over to the science policy dialogue. I was uh, observing pa Mego uh, Pinandito in this uh, room uh, he is the deputy of BRIN, who is uh, responsible for uh, policy and development. Um, but I, I don't see him anymore. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if other colleagues like Ibu uh, Juni Rahayu, uh, I also see uh, in the conversation in the chat room, Ibu Erna Adinengse. Uh, if you both professors from BRIN, can express uh, your um, 
impression and and comments on this process today we would uh, very much uh, value that uh, opinion and views uh, so that we can uh, shape how the evaluation of this process can be done by JCs and his team. Um, first of all, I would like to invite Ibu Juni, uh, Professor Juni Rahayu, uh, and then Professor Anna, uh, Erna Adenense. Thank you very much, Pak Daniel. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, everyone. Uh, great for me to join with uh, uh, this uh, workshop and this very important opportunity. Uh, uh, I will convey several important points related to this important workshop uh, along with the expectation and way forward action for the programs. From the information of the result of uh, FRL 1 and 2, which was delivered by the speaker in the previous session, it was very inspiring and lightning, uh, and lightning for me especially, because I think this is uh, the first time for me to know about the progress of the FR, FRL. And the planning information for the first uh, FRL in the second FRL was, was explained by Mr. Arif. It's very clear and that the plan for increasing this FRL and with the support or addition of technology and methodology, including anthropogenic factors, this is very, very important uh, for the improving of the second FRL. This is a very important thing I, uh, that have to be uh, considered by us. And I agree also, Pak Daniel, with uh, uh, what Crystal has mentioned, especially regarding to the second FRL, especially for the pool, which will be concentrated on pit and mangroves ecosystem only, and specifically for soil with a concentration on pit ecosystem. Uh, for the parameter of emission, in particular, the effect of forest fire in the sector of rail calculation, it's also a good idea to include them, I think. Uh, Yeah, because uh, we know that uh, uh, methane is very important, uh, have the negative impact to the human and also to the environment. Uh, now I will also uh, mention about the step for the implementation of the second FRL. This will, is, uh, will not be done without the support of many uh, stakeholders and also supporting from uh, supporting budgets. At the same time, its, it's success will also be supported by a very excellent researcher, stakeholder, and the local com community, as already explained by uh, Bapak Rudy from WRC, it's very enlightening and uh, I think it's very, very good, uh, 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 very good lesson learned, uh, which is this project is very important and then uh, give the benefit to the local community. And important things to answer the challenge, the challenge of the second FRL in Supporting the Paris Agreement, it requires the involvement of the stakeholder with supporting of the standardized scientific data as already explained clearly by Ibu Anna. And of course, secondary, secondary data support and from the latest research result need to be considered. And we and we also have several research 
from the Research Center for Ecology and Ethnobiology from Brin. It, it may be, it might be supported also for the second April. I think this is uh, uh, our college from Research Center for Ecology and Ethnobiology have uh, many data also to be support this second uh, FRL. At, at last, another important thing that was mentioned by the speaker in the first session related to the network and knowledge platform to improve the ability of the practitioner, practitioners to support the successful of FRL, we have to uh, think that uh, now it's very, very important with the improving of the uh, internet and also for art artificial intelligence and the others related to the, uh, yeah. And print, which is a research institution that also has uh, also collaborated with she for several times and produced several international journals. It's, really, it's all of, of course ready to support and cooperate with related stakeholders for the sustainability of the FRL programs. And we believe uh, that the result of this project will be useful in supporting the implementation of the national program to support the mandate of the Paris Agreement, but also benefit to the conservation program and the surrounding uh, community. Thank you, Pak Daniel. Thank you, Ibu, Ibu uh, Yuni. Uh, Rupes, uh, do uh, we still have time for one more comment, maybe three minutes from Ibu Erna? Yes, please, Pa. That's a good opportunity for three minutes. We should take it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ibu Erna, you have uh, three minutes. Uh, I saw your uh, conversation in the chat room about data. Uh, I remember when Osvaldo was mentioning about uh, uncertainty. Um, there is also huge uncertainty in activity data, which is based on remote sensing mainly. And you are uh, the, the, the um, executive director of Indonesian Space Agency within BRIN. Uh, how do you see this uh, potential collaboration in the future or process in improving FRL, future FRL, and not necessarily second, maybe third or fourth, um, using uh, much more improved activity data uh, in the context of your new role in, in BRIN? because the uncertainty is multiplicative if you multiply it by emission factor and error in the model of uh, land use would be uh, very much uh, you know, affecting and it's not a very accurate one. Three minutes, Ibu Erna. Oh, okay. uh, thank you, uh, uh, Daniel. Uh, good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, this... Uh, now, since uh, Brin is uh, quite a new, uh, uh, huge uh, in or research organization in Indonesia, and is the one, uh, the only research organization uh, in Indonesia. I mean, uh, go uh, government uh, organization. So that, uh, in which uh, uh, before we we uh, in the previous uh, time that that uh, so many research center under different ministry under different institutions now become to one uh, big organization and it's quite a, a big uh, much bigger opportunities for for uh, collaborative uh, research uh, particularly uh, in the tropical uh, regions in Indonesia because Indonesia is a kind of a life uh, a laboratory for for uh, forest uh, and uh, yeah forest uh, research and in this regard, uh, I think for the uh, remote sensing uh, data, uh, the, the it is uh, still uh, continued at the center as well as so many uh, uh, centers under BIN, uh, 85 uh, research center in total. So it's quite a big uh, research uh, organization. So uh, not only uh, 
uh, for example, in a forest uh, research, uh, in a, a social economic research, a human dimension of a climate change, as well as uh, from the space technology uh, based uh, research. Uh, so this is kind of a good opportunity. And uh, I think uh, uh, what um, Dr. Uh, Iman Idayat uh, in the uh, uh, in his in his opening remarks also mentioned about uh, the uh, 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 we welcome with the uh, collaborative activities, not only uh, NGO, and uh, of course uh, with the uh, bigger resources, including the data. Uh, what we have to uh, uh, improve in the future is uh, the uh, robust uh, method uh, to ensure the, the applicability of any any uh, data information derived from uh, uh, not only space uh, base or space technology but also from the field measurement. So this is, uh, I think, is a, a good opportunity, and we welcome uh, to uh, uh, yeah a more more. Uh, Productive uh, and enhance uh, such as um, uh, what we heard from from uh, uh, Ibu Haruni uh, Krishnamat from the uh, previously she is from the uh, Ministry of, of uh, Environment and For uh, Forestry, but now uh, she's become the one of the researchers under Brin and myself also previously under the uh, Space Agency, but now uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 working with uh, print. So this is my uh, yeah, just a uh, brief uh, comment. Thank you, uh, Daniel. Thank you, Bu Erna and Bu Haruni. Certainly, everybody is looking at you. Uh, you've been working a lot in FRL, and now you are within print, not with print, but within print. So everybody in this room is expecting so much for the um, productive interaction in the future, uh, especially on the re FRL related research. So we very much uh, hoping that Ibu Haruni can facilitate this process in the future between scientists working on FRL previously and then in the future when we are collaborating with PRIN as well as with BSI in the Ministry of Forestry. Rupesh, um, I also take some minutes uh, to uh, put some comments from my own perspective. Thank you very much for uh, having us to introduce colleagues from uh, Brin in your session. Thank you, Pat Daniel. It was very, very good and very nice reflections from the scientists and members of this agency and as you said we look forward to these opportunities and that that interactions and conversations and that's how i guess the, the, the today's session or today's workshop was on the role of science but the, but the, this kind of dialogue and discussion underpins that kind of advancement in science and we very much are fortunate to be part of this discussion uh, i would hand over this uh, session to our mc sita to formally close the session and thank you everyone for your contributions. Yeah, thank you very much for all research person also attendees for your enthusiasm and uh, active participation during this event. And before we leave this room, I would like to remind you that the organizer will share a link for post event feedback survey. And kind of fill in the form. We would like to hear your feedback. So in the next few, in the next meeting we could do better uh, but uh, i'm sorry in advance for taking a few minutes off of your time longer than 10. once again thank you very much for all your supports see you another time and keep healthy bye bye thank you so much and thank hey, you everyone bye bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.